So now it's set. Sorry for the inconvenience. Okay, perfect. So um, first I would like to get a little bit uh, introduced in the topic. Um, for the webinar that we will conduct today, um, you will not need uh, anything. It's just to show you how this feature works. And it pretty much uh, works for everything you would like to do, any, any geometry you would like to create, okay? So as a start, um, we can first create a simple project. And once you save it, you are able to create a geometry. So the main focus of today's webinar will be the geometry editor and how to use it and how to import your own templates or Python scripting to create your own geometries, okay? So on the right side of the geometry editor in the toolbox, you have the possibility to import as most of us can uh, would know if you have worked with the software before you have the possibility to import your own uh, templates or the templates that are included in jmax software so today we will be working with a 2d template just to make it a little bit more simple to understand and uh, as i said in the right side you will find all the templates that correspond to the geometry editor to jmax software and from here, you can basically select any geometry that you are interested in, and they are predefined uh, in the software. So you don't have to basically design anything from them, just give the sizes. And let's say, for example, that you are interested in the rotor, and then we go to the 2D geometry and you say a permanent magnet. And just by drag and drop, you, are, you have the possibility to import your own geometry. As you can see, once you drag the geometry that you selected from the toolbox to the geometry editor main window on the left side in the model manager you are able to see what is the uh, the parameter setting window that you can that is assigned to this specific uh, uh, template that it's on the right side you can select here many parameters you see that you have several menus and then you just have to provide the sizing of your machine or or your design to perform it in the geometry and then get the final the final design as you want it. As you can imagine, this uh, this template that is being used here, uh, it uses all the parameters that we are setting as inputs. And on the background, there is a Python script that is working, in which uh, which performs the, the 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 calculation of the different points and lines and and regions that will be assigned to this uh, geometry. So once we click OK, you will see that in the geometry created or in the sketch that is created, you will have several regions corresponding to the core or to the magnet. And this geometry then you can use to create your own design on JMAC Designer once you click on back to JMAC Designer. So the idea of the webinar today is to show you how to create your own template because as you can see, if I, if I import again this geometry here, I am not able to edit this Python script assigned to this template. So the idea is to create your own, to be able to create any geometry you want, okay? So for that, it's pretty much uh, an easy task to do according to what you, depending on the geometry you want, in this case, we want to work on a, uh, on a 2D plane. So we will right click on XY plane, we create a sketch. And then inside this sketch, you can go to insert. And then in template feature, you will find user defined region template. Okay. So as you can see now, you are able to select a script that you want to use. In this case, I prepared two examples that uh, we will use. So when you when you create when you click on edit script, the Python scripting editor from JMAC will be open. I don't know where did it go. Yeah. So in here you are able to write your own template and then just click on run, and the template will be like the execution the executable will run the the Python script, and you will see the geometry or whatever you created on the JMAC designer. Uh, uh, geometry editor, but you can use your own 
predefined Python scriptings just by selecting import. So you click on import and you select the Python script is a dot pi file that you have to create. Uh, as I said, I have two geometries. I will work first with uh, this one, let's say. So you select the Python script you want to work with and then you click open. You will be able to see the script as you created it with all the parameters that you want. And if I click on run, I am able to see the geometry I set on this Python script, okay? And as you can see here, you also have the menus that you want to work with. You can just set the, the sizes. Once you click, okay, if you win, if you go here and edit this, so let's say, for example, I want 19 instead of 80, you see that everything is set automatically. And it's pretty much uh, very, very useful in terms of what you want to do with your with your geometry. Okay, so if I set here five, you see that all geometry changes, and here I set six. So it's pretty dynamic uh, the the creation of the Python script. However, there is some uh, knowledge behind that you would like to I would like to show you. Okay. So once you have your geometry here imported in the in the scripting, uh, I will try to describe a little bit how is the procedure to create this geometry here. I'm not going to dive in too much on on the details on what the measures or what the the specific coordinates for all the points are, but I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the functions that are able to to be used here. So in the Python script as you can see it here on the first step is just to open the modeler so this these two lines here are basically uh, predefined okay so on the parameter setting here you are able to add all the parameters or the local variables that you want to use okay then you have to set the different um, labels to these variables that you will use in your design okay then on the edit panel on the left side here it's basically where you set how the setting panel will be distributed so if, for example in this case i selected two types of of uh, of addition panels on the left side if i want to put them all under the same uh, under the same menu let's say i just have to simply change what is the addition panel assigned to this specific variable that I defined before and when I click run you see that all of them compile in the same one okay so that's uh, as first in here as you can see for the label labeling of the of the variables I just assign names to them and they will be shown here on the menu so after setting the different groups and panels that you want to work with let's just put it as it was this was a perforation and this as well so the next step is to get all the values as uh, as you input them here or as the user will input them here and then assign them to the different uh, local parameters that we said and then after that it comes the process of creating the geometry so uh, it's very important that whenever you create a geometry, you are able to find what are the different points and different coordinates of the of the different entities that you have. You have several entities here. You have lines, you have curves, you have circles, you have points, you have ver vertexes, and all of them can be defined using the Python scripting if you have or if you uh, understand what are the different uh, functions that are used in JMAC to create the several entities that we have. For example, in here you have an arc, in here you have a line. So it, dep it depends basically on what you want to create, but you have to provide different uh, coordinates to be able to assign the points and, and entities on the geometry. So in here, I created a line that will correspond to, let me just make this smaller. And give that a little bit smaller. And open here. Oh, oh it's because it's just the type. Okay. 
So the first uh, element here is this outer line for the left side. Then the inner radius, as you can see here, is this one. So basically there's one entity per line in this case. So you have one entity for this line, one entity for this curve and so on. So the idea is to create all entities that you need to work in order for JMAC to recognize later what, a, what is that like a closer edge uh, compound in this case. So what you have to do is create all edges that will correspond to a single piece of, 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 uh, of your geometry. In this case, I divided the stator in two sides to make the geometry a little bit more simpler. And then you have to create a region out of it to be able to import it in JMAC. So only creating the edges and then assign them to, to, to a list to make it like a single piece, let's say, for example, uh, in this part here, I create the edges. So let's say that I uh, comment this line and I'm going to comment this line. And comment this line. So there are no regions at the moment, but if I go for the first part, in this uh, line here, and I show uh, this one. So I created a set of edges that will be corresponding to the left side of the design. So I just want to plot that so you see what I mean. And I say, one. so as you can see here, um, I have created only the lines or edges, I have nothing else. So that means that there is no region created. And if I go back to the JMAC designer, there will be nothing. Because that means that I have to first create all the, the regions assigned to the design to be able to import them here and then assign different materials to them. So if I go back here and sketch, I edit the sketch and the feature. Oh. Okay, it's an error there. Just a second. <clears throat> Okay, so insert and we're going to oh the feature is fine. So the idea then is just to create your different regions that you will use to be able to import them to JMAC designer. So somehow the Python script is closed. Okay, and, I have here. and uh, what I did in this design is I created two different regions, one for the left side and one for the right side of the stator. If you create one single region and then, for example, you have this circle inside, um, assuming you don't have these two lines, then the performance will be a little bit different because you have to subtract from the final region the center or the circle that you have in this part from the big part. And that requires a different function that is available on the help desk. So uh, there is a document that you can find. And uh, I will try to see in the help desk. If you go under help. And from here, you can go to all the topics and uh, to select from the overview. That's not an overview. So if you click on search, and then on Python scripting, you will find here the different functions that you can use on JMAX. So uh, the, uh, most of them are, are included in this uh, help desk. You just have to search for what exactly do you want. And in here, you can find all the information uh, regarding all the functions that you can use on your Python scripting. 
So for this, uh, basically, as I was saying, in this big uh, piece that you want to subtract from the big one, from, from the uh, rotor itself, that means you have to create a Boolean here and that it's a different function. So if we go back to the script edition, in this case here, oh, let me choose with you. So, as I was saying, and the process is basically first creating all your lines. There are no regions created in the first part. Then after you create all your lines, the idea is to uh, basically create regions out of those lines, okay? So the lines or edges in this case have to be assigned to, in this case, an edge list, as you can see here. And once you create the edge list, in, the, in, in this edge list, you have to create a closed loop of edges that will perform the creation of the region itself. So for the left side, these are the edges that correspond to this piece. And then for the right side, I also have an edge list corresponding to this piece on the right side. So the idea in this case is to form closed loops to then create a specific region for this side so in this is the this is the the methodology that you use to create your own region and as you can see there are arguments that you have to give to the function so it's pretty much uh, uh, you you would have to work with it to understand the better how to set this part here but basically this is the process so first you define your variables. Second, you create your menu on the left side according to how you want to use it. Then you create the different edges. You assign to an edge list all the edges that you want to use. And ultimately you create your region. So let's say for example, that in this case, I just want to work with the left side. I'm not using the right side. I just comment this line here. And embody it. And I just Okay, so in this case, what I did is I just uh, deleted the left side because I just commented it here, and then I will have only one region. Okay, so if I want to plot both regions, I have to create again a body list where I will add all the regions that I want or that will compound the full design. And in this case, if I go here and I uncomment this, create the second uh, second region. And I show all the best. Okay, so now, you see all the edges and the regions that you created. So once we close here, out of the template that you are using, so you click OK. And basically you have here your geometry created and you can go back, replace model. And you should be able to see it here. I'm not sure why is it doing this. I will show you another example in where you can see it more clear. But basically, uh, let's work with the second one again. Okay. I have it here. Okay. 
So in here you see the two sketches that you created using the JMAC template, and you can assign to both uh, to each one of them a different material. So if we want to work with this model, let's say for example, then you can use this design to create an application study, let's say a static analysis, and then you will be able to see the two pieces. That's very important for us because uh, when you assign materials to the to the different regions that you have created, then they have to be separated. For example, if you want to create in the single geometry the magnet in this side, that is also possible. Uh, you can create basically one uh, Python script for each part. Actually, that's what I would recommend. Uh, for the rotor, let's say in this case, you create one uh, single piece for the core or one Python script for the core, then you create a Python script for the magnet and you can create a Python script for the stator and also for the coils and so on. But the idea is to have one separate sketch or one separate uh, region for each single part so that later on you can assign materials to them individually. So just by, by dragging, dropping you, by dragging and dropping, you are able to, to assign different uh, materials to the regions that you have created. Okay, this is one example. I also did another one in here. And this is the example I was talking about. So if we go here under this design and then I go to restore CAD link, this is my geometry as I created it, okay? I am also able to edit the script that is assigned to this model. So if I go here under user define and I edit, I am able to change also the, the parameters. Let's say I want it a little bit smaller. No, be smaller. The shaft radius there, and here I set that three. I have to open the script. Apply for the return plate here. Okay. So if I go under edit scripting here. So for this uh, geometry, you can see that it, there is only one single piece, but in reality, we have actually three different uh, edge lists or regions that were created. One of them is the big one and also the two smalls. So in, the Python script you see on the left side, you have the core piece. I created an edge list for the full piece, the big one. I also created a region assigned to that edge list. And since these two are just uh, one circle, what I do is I create one region for each one. But uh, ultimately, JMAC does not recognize that they are, uh, they are embedded in one each other. So that means that for the big one, the smallest one have to be subtracted. And for that, you have to apply a Boolean. And the Boolean function basically looks like this. So in there, you have to create the different uh, arguments that you will supply to your function. And then you have, for example, in the Boolean operation, I want to subtract the two small ones from the big one. What is the tool in this case? It means which parts you want to keep and which parts you don't want to keep. And the blank will be the region that will remain. And the resulting body will be the, the region that will be created after the execution of the Boolean operation. It is important also to note that for the Boolean operation, in this case, you have to assign, you have to define only two regions. So that means that I had to apply two Booleans to create this final region here. On the first one, I took the big one and I subtracted one circle and then I saved that uh, resulting geometry in one another entity. So that's what I did here, uh, assigning it in the result body. And then on the second execution of the Boolean, I took this resulting body here and I subtracted the other small entity here. And basically, in the end, you have a final region, and then you just plot it, and you are able to use this geometry on your design. If you go back then to JMAC Designer, 
you have then one single piece, as I said before, and then you are just able to drag and drop your own uh, your own variables or your own materials to your specific regions in this case. So pretty much that's uh, that's how the Python scripting works. And uh, I forgot to mention that if anybody has any questions, you are uh, able to do so by in by inputting them on the chat log that you have on your dashboard for for uh, go to meeting go to webinar sorry and uh, if you have any questions just plot them there and we will discuss them uh, by the end of the session okay so you also have the possibility that, that that's also a very nice feature if you don't understand how a function works on the uh, on the python scripting or whatsoever you have also here this little magic button here that you can just click and it's recording basically everything you do in the geometry editor. So if I click OK, then I create uh, and the sketch and then I create a new sketch. And then in this sketch, I just, for example, I create a lot and click OK. So anything that you are basically doing in this design, it's being recorded by JMAC Designer here. And once you stop, it automatically opens the Python scripting that was executed for that variable. So for, for whatever we did in this case. So here you see the different functions that were used. And since you were the one who executed them, you are able to understand basically what is each function doing. This is also a nice feature that comes very handy when you create your geometry, since uh, it's, for example, very difficult to understand uh, how to set, for example, a circular repetition of this specific uh, region. And, uh, or let's say, for example, you want to create a constraint if, uh, let's do it again let's say for example i want to create um let's do another example so if i click on start recording and i delete this one I end the sketch. if i take this sketch and i import from another one let's say this uh, what this button does is uh, projects all the outline that you have in another sketch to your own but you don't know how this function works and how to use it in your python scripting you can just record while you do it you apply you close and if you go then to jma and stop recording here you will be able to see how you said that specific function or how is how is it used okay again in the in jmac uh jmac web page or in jmac help desk as well you are able to find a very nice document that uh that contains most of the functions uh, let me see if i have it around here So, uh, just a second, I have it here. Mm -hmm. So, in the installation folder of JMAC, whoever has JMAC, you can find this document, which is also very useful when you create your own Python template. So in here, you are able to see the different functions, API functions that you have, what are the important types of, uh, of variables that you can use. And here you can find the different, the different functions that you will use. Let's say, for example, for the Boolean one that we were uh, discussing before, I will try to explain a little bit on how to use it. So the Boolean 
uh, function that I use in my in my Python script. I'll just show you here. I go here and then for this one, for this one, so I did this script. So So the Boolean execution is done in these lines here, in all of them. Well, these are basically two Booleans that I am creating. So as you can see, these are the, this is the function that you use. Uh, I think it's, okay. So this is the main function. So it's just applying a Boolean operation. So dot Boolean, as you can see here. And in it, you have to, in, you have to provide the, basically this uh, array or dictionary array, which is described here. So the argument that you will provide to this function is described on this list here. So for this is a dictionary array that contains four types of, or I think four or five types of, uh, of variables. So five types of variables. And then you have to assign to them the different uh, descriptions according to what you need. So in this case, the first one is op. When you provide this dictionary array, it's being created basically here in Boolean argument. And then I provide for op a value that I assigned before. So in this case, it's Boolean operation. And then in Boolean operation, I use subtraction. So what I did is for this op or for this first value, I created a variable that will contain a string and the string is this one here. So it's subtraction. And this is the way you use it. So for this variable, I create uh, another one that will be this, uh, this uh, string subtraction. Then ND, ND bool keep, in this case, is another flag. This is uh, what I assign here. And then the executable that I want, in this case, the description is I want to keep both entities instead of just deleting the other one. Then the tool will be the solid for the Boolean that you want to execute. So the one you want to subtract and the blank will be the Boolean to, uh, where, where the Boolean will be executed. In this case is the core and the result body, it's a new body object that you create. So this is a new object I create. And then basically this is where the resulting body will be assigned. Then I create this dictionary array here just creating a list as you normally do in Python scripting. And then you execute the Boolean. So you create a new variable called Boolean body in this case, and then you apply the Boolean formula or the Boolean, uh, the Boolean uh, parameter here. And then you import or you give the argument to this function, the one you created behind. And this is just a, an error message in case that the geometry is not created. And you should then be able to create the, to, to have the final uh, body. So when you execute this one, it's, uh, the body is automatically assigned to the body you created, to the, to the empty body, and then you are able to plot it. So this document is very important. Uh, you can find it, as I said, in the installation folder for JMAC. Uh, and in here you see all how to create, for example, a curve in this case, or an edge. Uh, so here this is an ellipse, diagonal, center, arc, an arc. So in this case, uh, another example, let's say is this arc. So for the arc, if I go here on the Python script, for the arc, let's say I want the perforation in this case, or here, for the perforation, so the two circles. This is uh, nothing more than just another curve, but with the start and end angle will be like 360 degrees. So the function is curve underscore arc. As you can see, this is where I execute that uh, function. And I provide two arguments in this case. One is a list, a dictionary array, 
and the other one is an edge, uh, an edge object. So first I create the arguments, and in that it's just like the center, and the arguments, as you can see in this array, you have the center, the radius, the start angle, and end angle. So I just create the center, then I create the object, the edge object, and then I create the list. In the list, I provide the center is this one, the radius is this one, the start angle is this one, and the end angle is the last one. And I provide different values for them. And then I give the argument that list to the to the application of the form of the um, formula. And then it should work. So here you find, as I said, all the different uh, formulas that you can use with a description of the uh, the different variables that you have to provide to them. And it's very useful if you want to work with this Python scripting. So uh, I think we reach uh, we reach almost the end of the webinar. I wanted just to show you how to use them, how to import them. It's very useful. And also remember that you are able to, to record your own executions that you have on the geometry editor. And also when you use the JMark designer here and you uh, plot variables, when you create cases, when you do anything you do, once you click on the recording, will be recorded as a Python script. And then you are able to see it once you stop the recording. So I would like to know if anybody has any questions regarding what I said now. Uh, please, you can write them on the chat log so we can discuss them together. Okay, so I have a question here from Sunny. I think I answered your question. In the help desk, it's a little bit complicated to find it. Uh, let me see if I can. Uh, you have here a script help. If you click on help, you go script help, and it will open the scripting. So the scripting help desk, basically, this is the one you need. So for the scripting help, uh, let's assume you want the Boolean. Uh, Boolean between solid. Um, basically, the function. Okay, here. Optimization. Part. Mm -hmm. In the class. And the teacher. Class return. Uh, here you find a list of functions. Uh, the help desk is a little bit complicated to read because it has too many functions here. But for this uh, type of, of uh, executables or for this type of functions that uh, I just described, I think it's better for you to go for the manual here. So the user defined template API function. And uh, I will try to find here where is the exact uh, location. Just a second.
Uh, okay, I think this file, I'm not sure if it's in the... in the installation folder. However, if it is not there, then you are able to find it in the JMAC web page. Just a second, let me see if I find it here. Mm -hmm. Money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think in the yeah in the in the installation folder I cannot find it so I'm pretty sure then you can find it in the in JMAC website let me see I think actually for this, you can, okay. Okay, so I'm not 100% sure where the this file can be found. I think it is in the, it should be in the JMAC installation folder. And let's see, type some. Yeah. at the moment I cannot find it but uh, if anything you can just send us an email and we can send you the location of the file or the file itself but in there you can find most of the of the functions that you can use basically mm -hmm. so if you have also other questions you can do it on the question tab So I see that uh, nobody else has any other questions. Then I think we can then finish this webinar. I would like to thank everybody for the attention. Uh, as I said before, if you have any other questions, I will write my email here down maybe. Uh, just take notes of the email and then send me a private email and I will be able to send you the document if you want. So. The email with the file, I mean. I will also write it on the chat. So please send me uh, an email and uh, I will be able to send you the file until I find exactly the location because I thought it was in the installation folder, but it is not there. So 
I'm not sure if they deleted it in the new version or something. I just cannot find it. But just send me an email and I will send you the, the file if you are interested in having it where all the functions are described. So again, uh, thank you very much for your attention. I hope that this uh, webinar was useful to you and that you got a little bit more of an insight on uh, what this feature is about and how JMAG allows you to do basically all geometries that you want to do. And uh, I am looking forward for a next uh, webinar just to show you other features of JMAG. So thank you very much and uh, hope you have a great day.